Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting Gandalf, no, Randar from Gatefall by Jack Dyer Studios. That totally looks like Gandalf. Hey everyone, Matty from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the fifth episode in this Gatefall painting series. And today we are painting Randar, who is definitely not Gandalf. Randar is one of the characters in the fantasy theme team in this skirmish game from Jack Dyer Studios. So since starting to paint Gatefall, I've been really, really looking forward to getting on to Randar. And that's mostly because of what I've learned about painting minis at this scale because normally I just paint normal board game sized minis, so 28 or 32 mil scale. And what I've always found the main focus to be when painting minis of that scale is the highlighting and the shading, getting nice smooth blends from one color to another so that you can get a really, really strong contrast between your brightest highlight and your darker shadow so that when those minis are out in the middle of the table, all of those small details can be seen. But then when you're painting a mini at this scale, and I don't know what the scale actually is, but these guys are absolutely huge. So Brog, who I painted first, the big hulking guy from the fantasy theme team, he would have to be five inches tall or something like that. Gandalf here would be a good solid four inches. The others are a pretty similar size. So these minis are absolutely huge. And what I've found since painting Gatefall is that when you're painting minis that are this big, the focus shifts from that highlighting and shading and building that really, really strong contrast to more the finer details and making the different materials actually look the way that you want them to be. Because let's say you're painting a particular part of a mini to look as though it's damaged leather. Let's say you've got an adventurer and you're painting their cloak and you want it to look a bit scratched and scuffed and give it that sort of an effect. When you're working with a smaller mini, like a normal size mini, 28 or 32 mil scale, you can't paint each individual scratch and scuff mark because in reality, when you shrink it down to that scale, each of those scratch and scuff marks would just be too small to individually paint. So what you more do is just indicate the type of material and the condition that it's in. But then when we come up to this scale and now the surface areas are much, much bigger, yeah, we're not at life size yet, it's not one to one scale, but each of those individual scratch and scuff marks are going to be much, much easier to be seen. And so when we come to this scale, it's no longer just about indicating what the material might be and the condition that it's in, but you're actually painting it to look the way that it actually does. So that's the biggest change that I found when moving from painting smaller scale minis to larger scale minis, just the way that you shift your focus from the highlighting and the shading to those finer details and accurately painting materials to look the way that they should. But well before I started painting Randar, back when I was painting some of the earlier ones, I knew that Randar was going to be a bit different to the rest of them. And that's because there is no certain part of Randar's clothing or any part of him that I wanted to look a particular way. So if we take Penny, for example, so she's on the post-apocalyptic team, she has a leather cloak that she's wearing. Well, when I was painting her, I wanted her cloak to look really scratch and scuffed because being in a post-apocalyptic world, she doesn't just have a shop that she can go down to to buy a new cloak. She's a scavenger, so she's likely had that cloak for a very, very long time. And if they're moving from one location to another out in the sun and potentially moving down tight corridors and things like that, the leather has potentially become very faded and scratched and scuffed. And so when I was painting her leather cloak, that's the way that I tried to make it look. Not just like leather, but actually scratched and scuffed to represent the way that her character would be. But then with Randar here, 
sure, he has a leather robe that I'm painting at the moment. He has a cloak and the staff and hat and things like that. There wasn't any particular material that I wanted to look a certain way. I just want them to be colored the colors that they would be. So I could tell well before painting Randa that the focus for him was going to be more what it's like when painting a smaller mini. And that's just focusing on the highlighting and the shading, getting really nice smooth blends from one color to another, and then really, really pushing that contrast. So getting a nice big difference between the brightest, brightest highlight and then the darkest shadow. So that all of these folds in the clothes and all these little details really, really stand out. And so the reason that this meant that I was looking forward to painting Randa was because I just wanted to compare how highlighting and shading is from a mini of this scale compared to a much, much smaller mini. Which one is more easy or difficult to do? Now, kind of intuitively, it seems like it would be on a larger scale because you have more distance and surface area to work with. And so it's going to be easier to get nice smooth blends from one color to another. But then with a smaller mini, because you actually don't have that distance to work with, it could potentially be easier because you just won't be working with as many different tones. So let's just say I was working on a smaller scale mini, but I was painting the same part that I am here on Randar, a leather robe that's got some folds in it. Well, you may only have literally just a couple of millimeters from where your brightest highlight is going to be from your darkest shadow. And so how many different colors can you work in that distance? It's only going to be a few. So that may actually potentially make it more simple because at a mini of this scale like Randar is, if you only use three or four different shades of brown in the robe, it's going to look pretty flat because you've got big surface areas, but then not a lot of variety. So you really do need to build these highlights and shadows up with lots of different tones so that it doesn't just look so flat. So there's potentially an interesting balancing act going on there where at this scale, yes, you've got those larger surface areas, so it's probably going to be easier to blend from one color to another, but then because of that, you need to use a lot more different tones. And so this is what I was going to be looking for is which mini or which scale, sorry, is easier to highlight and shade, a larger scale mini like Randa or a smaller scale mini like what normally comes in board games. So now that I've finished painting Randa, it was a pretty easy choice. Not only did I find it easier to do highlighting and shading at this scale, but I also just found it more enjoyable. Having those larger surface areas means you could just play around with the different tones a lot more. It was a lot more free, I suppose. I think you're just a bit more restricted with what you can do with a smaller scale mini because you just don't have the surface area or the distance to work with. Now, I'm not saying for a second that smaller minis are not fun to paint. They absolutely are, and they're going to be the majority of what I'll be painting. But if we're just straight up comparing which one was easier to highlight and shade and which one was more enjoyable, it's definitely these larger scale minis. But I do think that all of the different tones that were needed to be used is an interesting thing to reflect on. Because like I mentioned earlier, one thing that I did think might make a smaller mini easier to highlight and shade than a larger mini is that you just don't have the surface area to work with, and so you just don't need to use quite as many different tones. If your brightest highlight is just a couple of millimeters from your darker shadow, well, you can't fit too many colors in that distance. And so you just don't need to have too many colors on your palette. But I think really the opposite ended up being true. Because yeah, sure, when you're working with these larger scale minis, you need to use more colors because if you limit the number that you use, it's just going to look pretty flat. So you do need a fair bit of variety in your tones. But all of those extra colors you'll work with essentially just gives you more options. And because you're working with a larger surface area, it's much, much easier to get a nice smooth blend from one color to another. Because if you're working with a smaller mini and you have that really, really short distance to work with, you might only be able to blend three or four different colors together to go from your brightest highlight through to your darker shadow. And so you're probably going to have bigger jumps from one color to another, and then those transitions are going to be easier to be seen. But because at this scale, you have that bigger surface area, you can use more tones to build from your darker shadow up to your brightest highlight. And so you get much, much smoother transitions because you have much smaller jumps from one color to another. So I just found that to be a really interesting reflection to make because it ended up kind of being the opposite of what I thought it would be going in. 
But overall though, I did think that highlighting and shading on a larger scale mini like Randai here was going to be easier than a smaller mini. And that's what I ended up finding and mainly just because of those bigger surface areas. So it made it much, much easier to get nice smooth blends from one color to another. So you're able to go much, much brighter with your highlight and then much, much darker with your shadows. But none of that takes away at all from painting smaller scale minis. They are tons of fun to do. And like I said before, that's the majority of what I'm going to be painting. So it's still lots and lots of fun but I have just found it easier on these larger scales. So I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on this. If you've had the chance to paint minis of different scales, do you find it easier to highlight and shade minis when they're at a larger scale or when they're at a smaller scale? So it'd be awesome if you could leave those thoughts down in the comments so that I can hear what your experiences are with it as well. All right, so just as I start to base coat Randar's cloak here, this is going to be a really good example of everything that I was just talking about and why I ended up finding it easier to do the highlighting and shading on a larger scale mini rather than a smaller scale. So this color here is clear purple. This is the color that I base coated with and what ends up being the darkest part of the shadow. And because it went over the black prime, it stays nice and dark. And then this one here is Amethyst Purple. So this is the one at the other end. This is what ends up being the brightest highlight. And you can see pretty clearly, these are very, very different colors. There is a massive amount of contrast between them. But because I had so much surface area to work with, which means I've then got a lot of distance from the darkest part of the shadow to the brightest part of the highlight, I'm able to build the transition up from the clear purple right through to the amethyst purple over quite a few layers. Whereas if you're working with a smaller scale mini, you can only do that over a few, which means you'll either be able to see the transitions from one color to another because you've had to make pretty big jumps, or you either can't go too dark with your shadow or too bright with your highlight so that you don't have as much contrast. But when highlighting and shading Randar's cloak, because I had so much surface area to work with, I was actually able to use a third color in the middle as well, which was this Imperial Purple. So I laid down clear purple as the base coat, and then the first layer of the highlighting was still mostly clear purple, but then had a little bit of Imperial Purple mixed in. And that first layer covered most of that original clear purple layer, but just left the deepest part of the shadow still showing, and I just feathered out the edges so that there was a nice smooth transition from the first layer of the highlighting back into the base coat. And then the second layer was that still that same mix, but just with more of the Imperial Purple mixed in, but I just reduced the amount of surface area that I covered it with again. And then another layer with more of the Imperial Purple, and then I just kept repeating that by gradually reducing the amount of surface area that I was covering until I was painting with just straight Imperial Purple. So then I left the clear purple completely out of the mix and then gradually started to blend in the amethyst purple, the color that ended up being the brightest part of the highlight. So each layer just becomes gradually lighter and lighter and lighter, but each time I'm feathering out the edge so that you get a nice smooth blend and a nice smooth transition into that previous layer. And then I just kept repeating that layer by layer until I ended up highlighting with just straight amethyst purple. But by the time I was up to that point, I was covering a very, very small amount of surface area because every layer gradually got smaller and smaller and smaller, working towards where the brightest part of the highlight was going to be. But again, after I finished laying down the paint for each layer, I feathered out the edge. And what that does is it just makes that edge thinner and thinner and thinner which then gradually allows more and more of the color underneath to show through, which is how you get your nice smooth blends from one color to another. So in the end, I don't actually know how many layers I used to do all of the highlighting and shading, 
but because I had so much surface area to work with, I didn't have to jump from the clear purple up to the amethyst purple in just three or four layers. I was able to spend a couple of layers shifting from the clear purple to the imperial purple, and then another few going from the imperial to the amethyst. And in the end, the contrast that you're able to get is just massive because there is so much difference between your brightest part of the highlight and the darkest part of the shadow. But you're able to get that awesome contrast because you can build it up over so many layers because you can use so many different tones because you're able to get those nice smooth blends from one color to another.
even this part here where I'm painting this top part of Randar's cloak is a really good example of just how much easier it is to build that really, really strong contrast with these larger scale minis. Because each of these individual studs, I don't know what you'd call them, the bumpy parts of the leather there, if this was a smaller scale mini, they would pretty much be about the size of the tip of a brush. And so if you are highlighting them, you'd probably be able to base coat in a nice dark color like I've done there, and then just pick out each individual stud, bump, whatever we're calling them, with just one single color. Whereas you can see I was able to base coat there with a mix of the muddy brown and black to make the grooves really, really dark, so a really, really dark shadow. Then I'm base coating each of the individual bumps with muddy brown and then I'm able to start mixing in some leather brown and then finishing with a final highlight of just straight leather brown. So even within each individual bump, there's a blend from the muddy brown through to the leather brown, which is still quite a bit of contrast. But when you consider the difference between leather brown, which is the light color there, and then how dark those grooves are, which was a mix of the muddy brown and black, that is still a massive amount of contrast in just these small little details. But at a, on a smaller scale mini, each of these bumps would be tiny, and so you'd really only be able to pick out each one with just one single colour. I mean, you could pick each of them out with the leather brown and still have the same amount of contrast, but then you miss out on all of those nice blends that just add so much depth of colour.
All right, so here I'm just starting to base coat this cool smoke effect that's emanating from Randar's hand. Now, in his artwork, this is just a plain whitish grey sort of colour, which is fine, but not very interesting. I wanted to make this look a little more mystical, and so I'm going with green. But the way that I'm painting it is exactly the same as I would if I was doing any other flame or smoke effect. And that's where, at its source, which is in his hand, that's where it's going to be the hottest, so therefore the brightest. And then as it then sweeps up away from his hand, it's going to cool down and then become darker and darker. So eventually I'll have the green really, really bright in his hand, but then it's going to blend out to a black right at the tip. So in terms of how to create those transitions, I just followed the really, really nice sculpts that there are in this smoke form. And I just treated each individual path of smoke, if we want to call it that, as a transitional sort of area. So at the base of each of those paths, I work up to a really, really bright green, and then it just transitions individually along each of those paths until it gets to the end, which is then where it blends out to black. So you can see I base coated with peacock green, which is my darkest green. And because it had gone over the black prime, that stayed nice and dark. And then I started to mix in some brilliant green and then some viper green, which then works towards pale green. But as it got lighter and lighter and lighter, I reduced the amount of surface area that I was covering gradually back towards Randar's hand so that it gets lighter and lighter and lighter where I want it to look as though it's really, really hot. But just like when I was painting Randar's cloak, I'm feathering out the edge of each layer so that we get a nice smooth blend from one layer to the next. So what we end up with is pale green right in Randar's hand, which will then blend into viper green, which then blends into brilliant green, which blends into peacock green, and then out to the black right on the tip which just helps to give that impression that right in his hand, it's really bright and hot, but then it gradually cools as it gets further and further away. Thank you. 
Alright, so just as I keep working away on the base here, Randa is finished. I had tons of fun painting him. Just having all of that surface area to work with for all of the highlighting and shading was really, really enjoyable because it meant that I was able to build up to the brightest highlight and the darker shadows over several layers because I was able to use so many more different tones than what I would be able to if Randar was a much, much smaller mini. So like I was saying throughout the video, I found it quite a bit easier to do the highlighting and shading at this scale just because of that surface area and how many different tones I was able to use to build up to those highlights and the shadows. Whereas when you're painting a smaller mini, you just don't have the surface area to work with. So you either need to sacrifice the amount of contrast that you're able to get so that you can get smooth blends from one layer to another, or you've got to be happy with maybe jumping a little bit too much from one color to another, being able to see those transitions, but then you're able to still get that contrast. Whereas at this scale, I just felt like I had a lot more freedom, but that absolutely does not mean for a second that painting smaller minis is no longer fun or enjoyable. It absolutely is. And once I finish painting Gatefall, no matter what game I go into after this, I'll be painting smaller minis again. So I still absolutely love them. One definite advantage to painting the smaller ones is that they just don't take as much time. These minis take so, so much longer to paint than typical sized board game minis. So that is one definite advantage that there is over painting smaller ones. But anyway, so thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. I really do hope that you found something in this that you can take away and use in your own painting. If you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up as well as hitting that subscribe button if you haven't yet and stopping by the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts for this channel. But that's going to do us for today. So until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.